You know, I've had a few good flights on my converted Byron F-16 to electric. I guess I was lucky. I also had some failures, so let's see what happened and what I learned. Hello, folks. Well, this is the second time I've fried an ESC in my Byron F-16 jet. So not wanting to spend any more money on this than necessary, I had to delve into it with more investigating. I've spoken with many experts on the subject and figure maybe you might like to hear what I found out. I'm going to try to explain it with an analogy so it might help some of you understand this better. I've been in electronics all my life but never looked at it this way as I have recently. Since electric fans, high amp ESCs and 22.2 volt batteries are pretty pricey, I want to make sure before I try this third time. So here are the two failure flights of the F-16 and you'll see what happened. I decided to use the two Venom 5500 milliamp 22.2 volt batteries as I was assured by Venom that they would be better than the 15C or 25C batteries I was using before. So here we go. Oh no! It quit. I've got no motor. Well, for an unknown reason, both the motor and the 150 amp Zeus ESC were fried using the 30C Venom batteries. So I installed a new 650 kV Chang Sun fan and a Hobby Wing 160 amp ESC. Here's what happened when I flew it again last week. Uh oh, quit. Are there more pieces out there of them? I don't know, but I got it. Have to go back and look. There's a web in there. There might be more inside. Sounds like it. Well, the first time I quit was with the 30C Venom batteries, which puffed and were very hot when Joe Cerna visited last fall. Both the motor and 150 amp Zeus ESC failed. So after talking to Venom, they said that I needed even higher C batteries, which at the time did not compute with me, and I will explain that later. So on that second flight, and first time since Joe was here, I had the new fan, a Hobby Wing 160 ESC, and Venom 50 C batteries, but as you saw, it failed almost immediately on this last flight. I actually slowed the motor down slightly before and it abruptly stopped and unscrewed the fan. Uh oh! Now before I try this again and spend even more money, I was able to run the motor with another speed controller just to test it. It seems fine and since I was able to find all but one of the fan blades and since I had some that were undamaged from the first fan failure when Joe was here, I was able to put the fan back together. Note that the fan is rated at 119 amp, 5000 watts at 650 kV, so the speed controller should have been able to handle it. So let's take a look at what went wrong. So I have conferred with quite a few experts including the folks at A-Main Hobbies where I bought the ESC, the fan manufacturer, Castle Creations and Venom before continuing. Okay, so let me clarify a few things. Some said my wiring was too small. Okay. But the wires on the motor, same 14 AWG on the first failure, with XT60 connectors. But with that second failure, I used the Venom 50C batteries that had 10 AWG wires. 
and that certainly offered no resistance to the ESC, so it should have been good. Even so, it seemed that when I flew it the last time, when I reduced the throttle about three-quarter, that's when the fan locked up. It was like the brake came on, but the brake was actually disabled in the program. I think it somehow did lock, though, as the nose cone came off, unscrewed, and the fan blades all came off when it quit. Well, now that the fan is all back together, I've been able to run it, and it seems fine. I decided to buy a Castle Creations 160 amp HVF ESC. I was also able to download the latest firmware, and all looks good. So at almost 300 bucks for the Castle Link programmer interface and the ESC, I wanted to be sure. I might point out that the ESC came with a coupon in the box for the Castle Link after I already bought it. So I mentioned that to the guys at A Main Hobbies and they refunded it. Now that's service. <laughs> Secondly, this ESC has a fan on it to keep it cool, even though mine is mounted right in front of the fan and gets good airflow. I don't want any overheating problems, so stuck with the fan. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and run the motor using the 15C Tattoo batteries the Zippy 25C batteries and the Venom 50C batteries to see what happens on the bench and you can watch what happens too. So you'll note that the motor runs at about 120 amp on my ammeter and that almost immediately the motor begins jerking. Note this is not the same as pulsing when the battery gets low. That's on the 15C Tattoo batteries. So I am told that this is why even higher C batteries than 50 are required. So it jerks. It jerks with the 25 C batteries too. So my analogy is that it's like cavitating with a boat. If you don't get enough water to the prop, it sucks air and begins jerking. Another analogy would be like a pressure washer hooked up to your garden hose. But with too small of an intake due to a small hose, the pressure washer doesn't work and pulses full blast and nothing than full blast. So to relate this to the batteries, it means that the motor is like a pump and it gets its supply from the ESC and the ESC gets its water from the battery. But if the battery can't supply enough juice, the motor begins cavitating. I've always thought of batteries like electric gas tanks. You know, the cells are counted by the S, such as 6S, which means there are six cells in series. The battery doesn't push voltage in the ESC and the motor, it's actually sucked out by the motor. The ESCs only regulate the voltage. In my case, this fan motor can only draw a maximum of 119 normal, and peak surges can be as high as 130. So if the battery can't supply that amount continuously, it's going to get hot, strain and overheat the ESC, and also overheat the motor. So now watch what happened to the wires when I ran the 50C Venoms on the test. Yep, it got hot and unsoldered. This is not good, especially in a flight. And not only did the wires unsolder, the battery connectors, the XT60s that are stock on these batteries, melted together and I couldn't get them apart. I had to pry them apart. So to eliminate all the wiring concerns, I changed them all to 10 AWG and installed 6 mm gold-plated bullet connectors, which don't get hot now. This is kind of a pain because I also had to make special connectors for charging these batteries. And I also was advised by Castle Creations to lower my motor timing to 0 degrees so it doesn't run so hot. In the last run, it runs fine until the battery depletes below 3.4 volt per cell. This is at about 2 minutes wide open. 2 minutes is actually longer than you think when you're flying something this fast, but certainly not as long as the original Naito powered versions we flew in the movie Blue Thunder. They ran 10 minutes. So I've ordered 60C batteries now, and I'm going to make that flight soon to see what happens. These batteries came with XT90, but since I've already changed everything out to the 6mm bullets, I had to do that too with these. So here's the test run. It seems like everything is running really good here. I ran it a good two minutes. This is uh, without being unloaded like it does in the sky, so it should run pretty good. So I've learned a few things, and I hope you have too. Uh, we're going to take it to sing out and fly it pretty soon with the bigger batteries and you'll be able to see how it goes.
But up next is the retry flight of my DHC2 Beaver and my float repair test at the lake. Thanks a lot for watching. This is the Night Flyer, signing off for now.